uh, in this lecture uh, we're going to talk about one of the most important uh, tests for convergence called the ratio and root test so it's called the ratio ratio and root test root uh, test so uh, before we talk about the uh, major theories about this one uh, let's look at the situation so for example uh, we know uh, this series so sigma n going from 1 to infinity negative 1 n 1 no n this is what we normally call the alternative harmonic series so if you look at the terms uh, it is first term is negative 1 plus 1 half minus 1 third plus 1 fourth like that so, but we know that uh, from the alternating series test by the alternating series test, uh, this converge, this converge. So we we just prove that this series gonna converge because by the alternating series test. But now what we gonna do? We gonna consider the corresponding absolute series. What's the absolute series means? We can take the absolute value of the terms. So let's look at that series. So if you look at the absolute terms, so we're gonna get sigma n going from 1 to infinity so we get the absolute value of the uh, terms so if you take the absolute value what's going to happen we can ignore the negative 1 to the n so it is simply becomes the uh, sigma n going from 1 to infinity 1 over n in this case so it is 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 this is the harmonic series and we know that this is uh, this diverge is the harmonic series harmonic series that's the name of this one or p equal 1 with the p series so this one diverge so we know that so what's going to happen the original series converge but the corresponding absolute series diverge so you can see the original series converge but the corresponding absolute series diverge so this has a special name so let's look at let's let's look at a definition so we have a special definition so what it says a series a series a series sigma a n we call converges absolutely converges absolutely converges absolutely or we also say uh, is uh, absolutely convergent is absolutely absolutely convergent convergent so that's another way to say it is absolutely convergent or converges absolutely if if the corresponding absolute series corresponding absolute series if the if the if this series uh, converges converges so if the if the corresponding absolute series converges we say the original series converges absolutely so uh, so in this case what happened so example so sigma n going from 1 to infinity negative 1 n 1 no n is not is not uh, absolutely convergent is not absolutely convergent because we know that the corresponding absolute series does not converge but how about this example uh, so we have let's say sigma n going from 1 to infinity uh, let's say 5 negative 1 fourth to the n uh, what, what do you know about this original series in the original series r equal this is a geometric series right because it's a to the rn so we know that when you have a to the rn type of terms so these are geometric series so we have a constant and the rn so in this case the r is uh, negative one fourth negative one fourth so if you take the uh, absolute value of r it is one fourth which is less than one so uh, converge so original series converge what about the absolute series so let's look at the absolute series also so if you look at the absolute series what are you going to get n going from one to infinity 5 if you take the absolute value uh, it's going to be uh, 1 fourth to the n because you take the absolute negative sign goes away in this case r equal 1 fourth but this is again very clear absolute r is 1 fourth again so it's going to converge again so that means 
Uh-huh. So this original series converge absolutely. Okay. So in this case, in this case, so sigma uh, five negative one fourth n that's the original one converges absolutely. In other words, it's absolutely convergent series. It's absolutely convergent series. So now we have a another important result. So let's look at that. So what it says that it says that if we have a series uh, which converges absolutely, then the original series has to converge. So this is a theorem. So what the theorem says is absolutely convergence test. It's called absolutely convergence test. Absolutely convergent. absolutely convergence a test. So what's absolutely convergence test says if a series if the absolute con absolute series if the corresponding absolute series converges uh, converges converges then the original series converge. If the absolute series converges, then the original series converge. So uh, this is kind of obvious. Uh, so we can see why. We can see that uh, a n is automatically less than bounded by these two, right? So this, so this is true. It's always true. But if the series converge. The two sides converge, so that means by the sandwich theorem, the middle one has to converge, right? So by squeeze theorem or the sandwich theorem, by the sandwich theorem, sigma a n converge. So this is true. This is simply a obvious result. So, but this has really nice uh, applications. Uh, so let's look at uh, two such applications. Uh, for example, if you want to kind of uh, prove this result, so I'm going to look at uh, uh, two such uh, situations. So let's look at one example, this first example. Uh, if you look at this uh, sigma n going from 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, 1 now n squared. Let's say we have this. So uh, let's look at the corresponding absolute series. If you look at the corresponding absolute series, uh, it is sigma n going from 1 to infinity. Uh, what's absolute series? If you look at the absolute value of this, of the n term, you simply get sigma n going from 1 to infinity, 1 now n squared, but this converge. Converge, why? Why this converge? It's a p series. It's a p series, uh, p equal to, which is greater than 1. So it's converge. So that means the absolute series converge. That means the original one absolutely converge. So that's true. That's easy. We don't need any any major results. But what about if I ask you to prove uh, this one? So let's say uh, you trying to prove this one. Sigma n going from one to infinity. Let's say you have a uh, sign n over n squared. So if you try to do the same thing with this one, so what's the corresponding absolute series? So if you look at the absolute series, you're going to get the uh, n going from 1 to infinity. The absolute value is sine n over n squared. In other words, sigma n going from 1 to infinity, the absolute, because this can be positive or negative, but the bottom is always positive. So we can write it like that. But this is not the P-series. This is not a P-series. Uh, so, so, if you want to prove uh, this result, this one converge. Uh, so, your goal is to you kind of try to show that uh, the original series is going to converge. But in this case, if you just want to prove this one converge, 
you know that the absolute series converge because you cannot just oh, you can originally show that this is converged but the the other one the first one this one converges by the uh, alternate series test so if you as apply the alternating series test uh, it's going to converge so it's easy because see in the alternate series test uh, it satisfy all those conditions uh, because the bn is 1 over n squared so in this case bn is 1 over n squared uh, which goes to 0 and also is decreasing uh, so that means satisfy the two conditions but when you look at the second one you cannot prove that the original series converge we cannot prove that the original series converge so that we kind of get stuck here so so one one workaround is instead of the original series we're going to look at the absolute series we try to see whether the absolute series can converge so if the absolute series converge then we can show that by this absolutely convergent theorem you can show that the this series is going to converge so but in the previous example uh, you really don't need the absolute convergence theorem for this one because you can originally show that this series converge by the alternate series test directly but the alternate series test does not apply for the second example so what you do you instead look at the absolute series and you show that you try to show that the absolute series converge uh, not that so, but you can see uh, not that not that sin n the absolute value is less than or equal 1 always so uh, we have sin n over n squared is less than or equal a uh, 1 over n squared but sigma 1 over n squared converges since it is a p series with p equal to which is greater than 1 so the so that means the absolute series converge so absolute series converge so by the by this absolutely convergence theorem the original series converge so now you can see uh, by the uh, the absolutely convergent theorem the original series that means sigma n going from 1 to infinity sin n over n squared converges okay so that's the kind of workaround for this problem but for the previous one you really don't need uh, this argument okay so this is like kind of how to uh, use the absolutely convergence theorem in a situation where you get stuck you cannot really approve this using the alternate series test because it's not alternate series and you don't you can't even apply the direct comparison or the limit comparison test uh, for this problem it's not even gonna work for that so uh, because the reason why we okay there's a question why we can use the uh, direct comparison test for this problem the reason is sign in is it's not always positive if it's always positive there is no problem so if you have sine squared in here then you can use the direct comparison test for this problem because sine squared n is always between 0 and 1 so you can replace that by 1 once you put 1 there 1 over n squared is a bit larger than this so but 1 over n squared series converge so that means by just the direct comparison this can converge but the direct comparison uh, test uh, does not uh, work for uh, this problem because those terms are uh, not uh, positive okay so now let's try to move on to the major result of this section uh, what we call the uh, ratio test so let's talk about the ratio test now uh, good so so what's the ratio test so this is uh, one of the most important tests in mathematics uh, most important series test uh, in mathematics okay so there is called the ratio test ratio uh, test uh, so it is I should say most important most important but still uh, there are some problems that you cannot uh, do using uh, this technique okay for example uh, okay first talk about what kind of things we do so we are gonna try like if you see uh, terms like 3 to the n uh, factorial n so that kind of terms uh, we try to so whenever you see like these kind of terms we try to go for the uh, ratio test so this kind of thing but if you see uh, terms like 
uh, like even even like let's say you have like 2n plus 1 to the n so this is also like kind of similar so we're going to go for this test but if you just see like terms like uh, like n like log n we are not going to go for uh, this test because the test is going to fail or uh, even like 1 over n 1 over n 1 over log n so those kind of things we are not going to use the use this test uh, it's not going to uh, work so you like any power for example basically like powers like that it's not going to work so the root test does not work for these kind of situation uh, not the root test the ratio test does not work for these kind of situations this works like when you have powers like 3n factorial things like that also there is an important result that we're going to uh, use later so uh, so what the result is uh, uh, for any for x are positive just pick any positive x then we know that x to the n is smaller than uh, factorial n and smaller than n to the n uh, for large n for large n because it's, it may not work for like a small n but it works for large n okay so because but we always talk about n goes to infinity situation so that means we can use this for large n it's not true uh, sometimes it's not going to work for a uh, small n so think about some numbers uh, where it doesn't work uh, good so how about the we write the theorem first so what the theorem says what the theorem says uh, so the theorem is what we call the ratio test ratio uh, test uh, so it says that let a n uh, not just a n uh, let sigma n the series let sigma a n be any series be any series and suppose and suppose that so what we can do we can take the ratio we first we can take the limit when n goes to infinity of this ratio what ratio we can divide two consecutive terms we can divide a n plus one with a n and we also take the absolute value so it is the absolute value so this ratio so what we do we divide two consecutive we divide two consecutive terms a n plus one over a n and take the absolute value and then take the limit let's say this limit is a number let's call this number is raw now there are three things can happen if this row less than one you get a number which number is less than one then what will happen the original series converges absolutely converges absolutely which implies uh, sigma a n converges so it's go through absolute value so that means ultimately what will happen is series converge but it, it is much more much more it says it's converge absolutely so it's like much st a strong result and then if a row uh, greater than one the series a n diverges so if row less than one series converge if row greater than one series diverge if this row equal to one what's going to happen the test fail test fail means sometimes what we call uh, inconclusive inconclusive so what will happen in this case uh, use other test use other test so that's what happened so there are three cases so what happened so what you do you divide two terms a in two consecutive terms a n plus one uh, with a n so we divide a n plus one with a n and take the limit let's say the limit is raw if the raw is less than one the series converges absolutely that implies the series converge if raw greater than one series diverge if raw equal one test fail so we need to use other test so let's try to uh, look at uh, several situations so now we know that especially when you see like powers like 3n 2n 
or factorial terms we try to use uh, the ratio test because that's the best one uh, that uh, gonna work so uh, let's try to look at uh, three situations first so how about this example uh, so example number one of this type so let's say test for convergence test for convergence so the first example sigma n going from 1 to infinity just some number divided by 3 n uh, actually this one you can automatically show that this is a geometric series uh, then you're gonna get uh, in this case r equal uh, one third so the absolute r is one third which is less than one so converge so we already know that but let's see how this uh, series work how this this new test work so what we're gonna do are uh, we gonna define your a n so in this case a n equal what a n equal 2 over 3 n if you want you can pull the two out first just to make the calculation is it's up to you uh, if you consider the whole term this is what you get a n equal 2 over 3 n so uh, in the, uh, if this is the case now what will happen what is a n plus 1 so a n plus 1 means wherever you see n plug in n plus 1 that means 2 over 3 n plus 1 that is a n plus 1 now what we can do we look at the ratio so it is a n plus 1 divided by a n so we write 2 over 3 n plus 1 and then you have to divide the ratio divide, divide the ratio is multiply by upside down so you multiply instead of the division you write it uh, upside down multiplication that's the division means when you have a ratio now we can simplify how to simplify <coughs> you can see there are some cancellations 2 cancels with 2 and 3 n cancels with 3 n so n get cancelled so what you simply get is only one third is that right you just get one third so now what happened to the limit so the limit n goes to infinity a n plus 1 over a n because you don't need the absolute sign so that's why I did not put the absolute sign here uh, so you're gonna get is one third which is less than one okay so by the ratio test series converge so that's the row so the in this case row equal one third which is less than one so by the ratio test by the ratio test it's a ratio so it's easy to remember by the ratio test by the ratio test uh, by the ratio test series converge very simple by the ratio test uh, series sigma a n converges ok very good so it's very easy uh, by the ratio test series converge you can really say converge you don't want to go through absolute, absolute series so let's look at another one uh, how about this one uh, sigma uh, n going from 1 to infinity uh, 2 n plus 1 over factorial n over factorial <coughs> so this problem is also very similar a n equal 2 n plus 1 over n factorial uh, and then in this case a n plus 1 equal to n plus 2 you could you add one more over n plus 1 factorial n plus 1 factorial <coughs> so let's look at the ratio a n plus 1 over a n these are all positive so you don't need the absolute sign here uh, so we have a n plus 1 a n plus 1 is 2 n plus 1 n, uh, n plus 2 n plus 2 over factorial n plus 1 again it's a ratio so divide means multiply upside down so it means 2 n plus 1 now we can do a trick here so what's a trick so this is a special trick that we use when you have see factorial we can expand this factorial <coughs> what is this factorial means the factorial means this is how we expand so we can rewrite the top the bottom we're gonna pull out one term we're gonna pull out the one first term that's the n plus one and the rest you can write as factorial n that's how you're gonna expand 
because you can see this exactly this is exactly similar to n plus 1 factorial because if you write n plus 1 factorial it's going to go n plus 1 n plus a i'm sorry n plus 1 and then n n minus 1 like that but we're going to kind of collapse all of the other terms and we write simply as n factorial but we leave the first term <coughs> okay uh, the other one we just going to leave so uh, so the rest we can leave it is n factorial over 2 n plus 1 now you can see the nice cancellation so you can see that this uh, you can see that this factorial n cancels with that factorial and that is the reason why we did this you can see that cancels uh, very well and also uh, you can see uh, the 2 cancels with 2 so 2 cancels with that 2 so those all goes away so that means you simply end up with uh, <coughs> just a few terms so what do you get so finally we end up getting uh, n plus 2 over n plus 1 and then that extra n plus 1 now the interesting part when you take the limit when you take the limit, you can see that when you take the limit, you can see that this term simply goes to one because it's n plus two, n plus one. You can ignore two and one, so it's a n of n that is one. So it goes to one, and this term simply goes to zero. That means this whole thing goes to zero as n goes to infinity. That means rho is less than. That's the rho. Rho is less than. Uh, one so the series converge okay so, but let's try the rest of the terms <coughs> so we can see that so the limit n goes to infinity a n plus 1 over a n absolute value uh, which is the limit n goes to infinity n plus 2 n plus 1 the extra n plus 1 so this simply <coughs> equal uh, 1 times 0 so which is 0 which is less than 1 so that means by the ratio test ratio test uh, the original series converges okay it's through uh, absolute convergence but ultimate goal is converge okay so uh, so that's that's that let's do uh, one more example and see what's going to happen for example if you try to show this problem so if you try to show this problem so now problem c sigma uh sigma uh one n and going for we know that this uh, this is diverge this harmonic series it's p series p equal one diverge we know that but what is a n in this case a n equal one over n uh a n plus one equal one over n plus one so what we can do we can take the limit uh, n goes to infinity a n plus 1 over a n absolutely you really don't need absolute but we just write it just to make it practice so n goes to infinity a n plus 1 means 1 over uh, n plus 1 uh, a n means <coughs> divide that means multiply that means 1 over n so this is simply limit n goes to infinity n over n plus 1 so if you consider the only the largest term that is uh, n and n you see that this converts to 1 so that means what the test fail so the test fail or inconclusive okay that means you can see that for 1 over n this test does not work so 1 over n this test does not work so what you need to do is you have to use some other test but what is the what is the test for this one how to show uh, this this series converge uh, not converge diverge use what's the test integral test use integral with well, this e to integrate it's log n okay use integral test by the integral test you see that the sigma 1 now n diverges if you want to so originally or just use this just say it's a p series p equal one diverge that's the other way to say it or it's a p series uh, with p equal one 
So this implies uh, diverge. So you can just use two other tests to prove that, but the ratio test fail. Okay, ratio test fail. Okay, so that's that's uh, one uh, result that we use. So let's do uh, maybe uh, one more example. Uh, so this is the last example I want to do in this type. So d uh, sigma let's say two n over factorial. N. Now we have both. We have powers and factorial. Uh, so uh, let's do the same thing. So we can write the limit. Uh, n goes to infinity a n plus 1 over a n. Oh, actually, I want to change the problem. How about we kind of change this problem to this one? I'm just add more. So I'm going to make it a little, little scary looking. Okay. <coughs> so we're going to do negative 1 n to n over factorial. N. So let's see what's going to happen now. Uh, so, it's a, so we really need the absolute sign now. So what's going to happen now? Uh, so it's a limit. n goes to infinity. Negative 1 n plus 1. 2 to the n plus 1 of factorial n plus 1 times <coughs> upside down. So that means factorial n goes to the top. Negative 1 n. 2 to the n. Absolute value. But the thing is that since we consider absolute value, we really don't need these two terms because it's just one with absolute under the sign. So let's try the rest of the term. <coughs> so what are you going to get? L limit. And the rest of the term is positive, so we don't need the absolute sign anymore. 2 and 2 and get cancelled, so you get one of the two on the top. I can take it out. And then the, we do the same trick as before. We're going to pull out uh, one of the term, and then we have factorial n. Now uh, you can see that uh, factorial n factorial n get cancelled. So you simply end up getting 2 over n plus 1. Uh, that goes to 0, which is less than 1. <coughs> Those are the series converge absolutely. That means original series converge. So uh, sigma n converges by the ratio test okay so you can see that it's very simple very very simple uh, because you're gonna have 2 over n plus 1 n plus 1 goes to infinity uh, so 2 over n goes to 0 so that means uh, less than 1 so that uh, series converge absolutely okay so you can see this problem will be very difficult under any of those tests uh, if you try to use integral test uh, direct comparison or, or limit comparison with all of them this can be like a little difficult because of the format because you're two n no n factorial n okay good so let's try to move on to the other test so so this is a ratio test It's very powerful you can do a lot of amazing things uh, with this uh, test uh, so now I would like to go to, and we can do one few more problems at the end after we're done with two tests, both tests. I would like to do uh, one more, maybe one or two more uh, special problems. So let's do that later. Let's finish the, the other test. <coughs> so, so the next test. So what's the next one? Is what we call the root test. Uh, so the root test. So let's write this directly as a theorem. Uh, no, let's write root test. So as before, uh, it's again very powerful. Uh, when we see like terms like n to the n, those those power terms, uh, or any other per terms like n uh, squared, things like that, or like uh, like one over n plus one to the n, or n minus three over n to the n, like like that because you can easily take the root once you take the root that the one of the n get cancelled so that's the kind of uh, argument here so if you see these kind of things uh, we're going to use the root test so let's try the root test now so what the root test is a theorem this is called the root test okay so <coughs> so what do you do so it's very similar let uh, sigma a n be any series be any series and suppose that 
suppose that see what we can do now last time we divide we get the ratio that's how we call the ratio test right now we are not going to take ratios we just take the limit when n goes to infinity of we can take the absolute value of the nth term and take the nth root so we take the absolute value of the a n term it can be negative so let's say absolute value and take the nth root this one we're going to call rho and then the rest of the part is exactly same same as the ratio test if rho less than 1 sigma a n converges absolutely this implies sigma a n converges and then if rho greater than 1 sigma a n diverges and see if rho equal 1 the test fail test fail so use other test use other test um, good so let's try to uh, look at uh, some examples uh, so again note so we know that uh, uh, so use use when we have we have terms like uh, n to the 4 3 to the n or some function to a n power like that so those are the cases we can use the the root <coughs> okay so this is what we call the root test the conclusion part is, is very similar but here you take the nth root of the nth term that's what you uh, what you remember so let's look at some examples uh, so how about this so example test for convergence test for convergence so let's look at uh, I want to see something like uh, this Mm. How about let's see what is the best one to do? Uh, I want to do mm. I want to do like A. Um, sigma n going from 1 to infinity uh, let's say uh, n squared over 2n so so let's write it so what we can do uh, we can write the uh, so in the limit of n goes to infinity the absolute value of a nth nth root so that means these are positive so you just need to take the you just need to take the root so if you take the root uh, a n squared 2 n the nth root means 1 over n so how it simplifies is a limit n goes to infinity if you take the nth root it is n uh, 2 over n 2 to the n 1 over n is that right 2 times 1 over n that's the nth root so what will happen n and get cancelled so you simply get uh, okay in the top what we can do we can do some trick here <coughs> so in the top we can switch that so we can say n 1 over n to square when you have power of a power you know that so let's recall that when you have power of a power that means a times m n this one you can again write as a m n so you can switch them you can switch the powers <coughs> if you have two powers you can switch them that's exactly what we did for the first one we switch the powers for the second one for the second one n n get cancelled so we get two just two <coughs> Now, remember we had a result uh, that was given earlier. 
that says that n to the 1 now n goes to 1. So there are there were two results. One result says n to the 1 now n goes to uh, goes to 1 as n goes to infinity. So n to the 1 over 1 n to the 1 over 1 goes to 1 as n goes to infinity and also we had any number if you have any positive number uh, and if you raise to a power nth if you take the nth root this also goes to 1. So here we assume that a is positive. So those two results are important. So we can use uh, the top one for the first so that means this ratio simply becomes this ratio simply become the top simply become 1 so 1 square this simply becomes uh, this simply becomes 1 squared over 2 which is 1 half which is less than 1 okay so that means by the root test by the root test sigma n going from 1 to infinity n squared over 2n convert so that's how you use the root test <coughs> and then actually you can also use the ratio test for this one so uh, so I'm going to write this as a not uh, can also can also use a ratio uh, test okay that's why like you know not always but sometimes it's easy uh, so try it try the ru ru ratio test and see what's going to happen so let's do more uh, so how about another example uh, so let's do this one sigma n going from 1 to infinity uh, 3 over 1 plus n to the nth power so this is really a root test problem because you see the n power so so let's see how the argument works limit n goes to infinity uh, we can take the nth root of the nth and these are positive so you don't have absolute sign here it's the limit n goes to infinity if you take the nth root you can see that <coughs> I, I'm going to write this one because it's a kind of first example of this type so if I nth power nth root that means 1 of n power so n 1 now get cancelled so you simply get uh, the limit of 3 to n plus 1 which is 0 is that right because 3 over n plus 1 this goes to 0 which is less than 1 so uh, converge okay. so converge so by the ratio test uh, this one gonna converge <coughs> convert so how about uh, one last problem of this type number c uh, how about sigma n going from 1 to infinity uh, n minus 3 over n to the n squared uh, so what is n squared means what is 3 squared means 3 times 3 so what is n squared means n times n. So let's see how the uh, limit test work, root test work. So it goes to infinity. These are all positive. <coughs> so we don't we just write the nth root. So what's the nth root? The limit. N goes to infinity. N minus 3 over n to the n squared. That means n times n. Nth root means 1 over n. So you can see one of the n get cancelled. So so you simply get so you simply get limit n goes to infinity n minus three over n to the n. I hope you remember this is one of the results that we had earlier. So we're gonna write this one in a kind of special way. So what we can do, we gonna divide by n top both terms. So you're gonna this is gonna be one minus 
3 over n to the nth power. <coughs> Anyone remember this? What can happen to this limit? What is the limit? This is simply special case. This is simply e to the negative 3. See the negative 3? So, this is simply e to the negative 3. That means 1 over e to the 3 which is less than 1. So, converge. Okay. So, this one converge by the uh, root test. Yeah. So, what was the result? So, this was the result limit. n goes to infinity. Uh, 1 plus x over n to the n power is e to the x. So, that was the result. So, we had uh, this result. Okay. So, uh, I am going to like kind of a uh, few extra problems. So, the theory is over. So, let us try to kind of do a few more uh, examples just to kind of make sure that uh, we kind of understand the argument. So, I might do uh, maybe uh, uh, two more problems or oh, one. Oh, yeah, let us say more problems. So, the theory is over. So, just, just to practice. Okay. So, uh, yeah, maybe two more. So, uh, so more problems. Uh, more problems. So, let us try to do one from uh, uh, the ratio test. So, sigma n going from 1 to infinity 2n plus 5 over 3n. Uh, so, we can use the so it's a power. So, we are going to use a ratio test. Actually, you can use uh, uh, this is uh, you can write this one as a geometric series. Sum of two geometric series. You can split it. So, this becomes sum of uh, sum of to geometric series geometric series you know about this one now because you can split this but let's try to use the uh, ratio test now so it is uh, a n is simply 2 n plus 1 over 3 n so it is a n plus 1 over a n so let's simplify it is 2 n plus 1 plus 5 over 3 n and then 3n plus 1 actually, 3n plus 1 and then write upside down. So, this is 3n over uh, 2n plus 1 plus 5 and you can see that 3n, 3n get cancelled, <coughs> 3n cancel with <coughs> 3n. So, you simply get uh, one third times and then you have 2n plus 1 plus 5 and then 2 actually there is a mistake here. Uh, so, this cannot be n plus 1. This has to be uh, 3, 2 n, 2 n. It is only 2 n. So, uh, so this is going to be uh, 2 n plus 5 and you can see that you can ignore these small numbers compared to those large terms. That means 2 n plus 1 over 2 n. That means 2 n, 2 n gets cancelled. So, you get 2. So, it becomes 2 third <coughs> which is less than 1. So, uh, uh, so, in the limit actually, no, you can just write it like that. So, the best way you put an arrow here, so you can say it converges, you can say this can converge, converge to two thirds as n goes to infinity. So, you can write it like that. So, that is that's a valid argument. That is a valid argument. So, when you, when you can say arrow, so do not put an equal sign there, that is wrong. You have to say arrow. So, goes to two thirds as n goes to infinity, you write it like that. So, therefore, so by the ratio test, by the ratio test, uh, sigma a in the original series converge. So, it is a uh, nice example. Uh, how about uh, one last problem uh, from uh, <coughs> one last problem from uh, ra ratio. A root. So, how about uh, say sigma is the last one sigma n going from 1 to infinity to n over n cube. <coughs> so, this 
so again for this problem you can use root test and the ratio test both so let's use the ratios ratio test now so it is uh, a n the nth root so we can take the a n nth root so if you take the nth root so it is uh, 2 over uh, n to the 3 over n as before and then we're going to simplify this like this n to the 1 over n cube you switch the powers and you can see that this going to convert to the bottom goes to 1 but this term goes to 1 so it's going to go to 2 over 1 cube which is 2 as n goes to infinity <coughs> which is greater than 1 <coughs> so the series uh, diverge okay so the series diverge so by either root test by the root test uh, the series uh, diverges diverges okay so let's uh, try to try to use any of these tests with uh, this uh, ln n over uh, let's say ln n over ln n over n see what's going to happen to this and also uh, try with sigma n going from 1 to infinity negative 1 n or 1 over 4 n plus 3 see what's going to happen to those two okay see whether this uh, can you prove whether it's converge or diverge or fail test fail so it should be one of them see what's going to happen <coughs> Uh, in the in the first one, two n plus five over three n. If you need to find that where it's going to actually converge, you have to use a geometric series sum formula. Remember the sum formula. Uh, sum formula is uh, so if you have a geometric series a r n uh, going from uh, in this case n going from zero to infinity a is simply a over one minus r if the absolute value r less than one. So that is the geometric series uh, sum so you have to use that if you want to find the actual sum okay so this is the end of root and the ratio test